Hey, what's up? My name is J.M. Chaley and welcome to my channel. This week, I want to talk about a supernatural creature. Yep, we're doing a creature spotlight. It's been a while. A creature called the Nacken. Sometimes this is called the Knack or the Necken, and sometimes it's even referred to as a Nixie, depending on what part of the world you're talking about. There are Germanic versions of this. There's versions of this all through Scandinavia. Specifically, I want to talk about the Nacken from... Sweden, that classic version of this particular being. Now, if you're new to the channel, I know that in recent months, uh, it's now June, <laughs> going back to March, I've picked up a lot of new subscribers. Thank you, by the way. In addition to talking about my writing journey on Kindle Vela and publishing my works, I talk a lot about the fantasy genre in general. And one of the things I do, if you've checked out my back catalog of videos, is talk about creature spotlights where I'm going into unsung, cool, supernatural beings that either aren't shown enough in fantasy fiction or maybe they're shown, I'll just say wrong, or if there's other ways to show them that might harken back to their original folklore a little more than they should. I'll use Siren as a classic example you see lots of sirens in fantasy fiction, but they're always depicted as mermaids. You know, I have a video on that. Um, goblins um, have become very D&D &D, no matter where you go, typically speaking. Occasionally you see them going back to their roots, the old Germanic and Fae kind of origins. So, and I talk about other things that just aren't really seen in our, <laughs> our fantasy folklore or fantasy fiction books all that much. So Nacken is one of those examples off the top of my head. I can't think of a lot of Nacken books or books that have Nacken in them. I'm sure they exist in Sweden. I'm sure you go to Sweden and there's probably tons of Nacken. Sink your teeth into some good Nacken content. I don't know. Maybe you go into Ikea. You know how they have the fake books in Ikea? They show the shelves, you put them together, you can pick them out, and it's all in Sweden, Swedish. I can't read that, but they could be about knacking. I don't know. They also have the this pear drink. It's like a carbonated pear soda. I don't know, it's like Ikea. And they have like the little cafeteria up there with the meatballs and the pear. Soda has nothing to do with Nacken or Sweden. Well, it is about Sweden. I'm way off track here. So get some pear soda, turn up the ABBA, and we're going to talk about some Nacken adventures. So the Nacken is a water spirit. You might want to call them a water fae or a shapeshifter, whatever you want to call them, whether it's fae, spirit, whatever you're going with. They live in the water. And what's cool about the Nacken is if you... If you look at sort of the spirit community in, in uh, folklore or the fae community in folklore, usually the things that are trying to lure you, with few exceptions, you know, you've got the will-o'-wisp, which is just a ball of light, right? You've got monsters that live in the bogs and stuff like that in the lakes, like Kelpie that'll just drag you in. But usually things that lure you somewhere... Are, are, are beings that look like beautiful women. And they're alluring and they're beautiful and you see them and you're like, oh, and you go to them and then they kill you. The Nacken are male. They, they're beautiful, hunky, buff, you know, dudes in the water. <laughs> you know, I'm talking like seven minute abs, right? All the, all the stuff. But they're not always evil. That's the other thing that I love about them is they're specifically not always evil. Sometimes they just want to hang out. They want to play music for an audience, usually women and children. But they want to be heard. Their songs be heard. The other interesting thing about them is that they can shapeshift into inanimate objects. Now, we've seen lots of different fae in folklore talk about shapeshifting fae. They're all over the place. Even there's versions of goblins that can shapeshift into horses. 
the Nakan can definitely shapeshift into horses and other creatures and stuff like that. But there's stories of them shapeshifting into logs. Just a piece of wood floating in the water. And you get in there, and then the log turns out to be, you know, handsome man and drags you down into the water and, and drowns you. I don't know why. There's no real story that I found about them, like, eating you or taking your life force or something. It's more about just killing you. And these legends were probably created to frighten uh, children or, or would-be swimmers, right? Because if we're talking about water safety and watching where you're going and thinking about what might be in the water, you know, shouting before you get in the water and that sort of thing and being very careful of your footing, um, they're cautionary tales, you know, of being careful in the water so you don't drown. Watch out for the knacking is probably where these origins probably came from. But we're not really sure. Because the Nakan stories are pre-Christian. And when Christianity came in, the, the people writing the history now infused uh, Christianity into those stories and, and changed the original content of what they were. Sometimes a Nakan will take a mortal spouse. They marry a woman. And they go and they live in a village or they live with their wife, you know, wherever that may be. But eventually these stories all kind of end the same way. They, they long to return to the water. And the water in this case is always lakes and rivers. It's not really ocean. These are freshwater beings, but they always miss the water. And eventually they leave their wife and leaving her heartbroken, they abandon their family and that sort of thing. And it's, it always ends in tragedy. Sometimes the wife tries to follow them and it gets worse and the you know, but there are stories of, of them taking wives, which I think is interesting because that goes back to the idea that these aren't just murder, murder hobos that want to just bring you murder himbos, <laughs> murder himbos that want to bring you into the water and kill you. They want to coexist. They want to play music. And I talk about playing music. They're, amazing musicians that their song can just enrapture whoever is listening and draw them in. Earliest and mostly pre-Christian versions of them have them playing the harp. So you see these men sitting by the riverside or, or on, by the lake on rocks or whatever playing the harp. They're nude, right? So the idea is that the women come down and they see that they're listening to the music they're checking out the dude. And there's not necessarily death involved. That's just kind of the story, you know. Post-Christian uh, influences have the neck in playing the violin. And we believe that that's mostly because, you know, we, we imagine the devil playing the, the fiddle. And they're trying to associate temptation and lust and all that kind of stuff with evil and and the, the women have to watch out, you know, and it's the devil playing by the, the waterside and playing the fiddle. Now, I mentioned shape-shifting. Yeah, the log is certainly a thing where they can kind of surprise attack. The other thing is a favorite form of the, the Nekin is to turn into a horse. And the idea is you get on the horseback and it just charges into the water and drowns you. I don't know why these people just don't jump off and why you're... But whatever. That's how the story goes. Which is very similar to, again, the Kelpie, which is another water-faring horse, sometimes considered part of the fey community. But that's already in the water. You get in, the horse grabs you, pulls you in, drowns you. Uh, they also transform into fish. And I'm not sure how that gets you, but it certainly allows them to hide in plain sight. So there are a number of stories that I found for the the neck and one of them was that there was a farmer who had a, a few horses and one of the horses was doubled duplicated so let's say i i don't know specifics of which which horse it was but let's say he had like a chestnut mare and when he came into the stable the next morning he had two chestnut mares so he thought okay one of these is a shapeshifter one of these might be a neck in. 
So I'm not going to plow the field. I'm going to have my servant girl plow the field instead. What a great guy, right? So, but he tells the servant girl, um, wear an apron. And so, and I don't know how she picked the one that was the neckin, but basically the bridles up the, the fake horse and brings him out and starts plowing. And basically what happens is they, the farmer calls out to the neckin and says, I know it's not, you're not really my horse. And when, when the neckin panics in a horse form, grabs the maiden in its teeth and pulls. He's going to pull her into the water, you know, run off with her and pull her into the water. But she has the apron on, so she basically unties the apron. The horse pulls the apron off of her, runs off, and doesn't get away with the servant girl. There was another story where this Neckin, again, disguised as a horse, found a bunch of boys um, that wanted to ride on the, on its back. And this horse elongated its back the more boys that hopped on. That should have been a red flag. I mean, come on. But they're all getting on the horseback, and the Neckin's thinking, yeah, I'm going to take these kids, take off, go into the water, drown them all. The last boy who was trying to get on had a speech impediment. He had trouble. They didn't really specify how he had his speech impediment worked. But he, I guess the gist of it was that he mispronounced names because of how he spoke. And something about the language of, and I, I don't know the Swedish words for it or anything like that, but he was basically saying, trying to say something like, I can't get on. He was having trouble getting on the horse or I'm having difficulty. And whatever he was trying to say sounded like the word necken. That's not what he was trying to say. But that's what the horse heard. Or the Neckin herd. And and I'm using Nacken and Neckin interchangeably here because it depends on the Swedish version of the story that, that we're dealing with, but it's the same creature. So the, the horse hears the word Neckin, thinking that the boy's like, hey, that's a Neckin, but he's really saying something else. He's really mispronouncing something. And the horse takes off, throws the other children off its back, and runs away. And the the boy with the speech impediment inadvertently saves himself and all his friends. The last story is a bit disturbing. It deals with the loss of a, of a child. So if you don't want to hear this story, you want to skip towards the next section of this video, skip to this timestamp here, and you'll, you'll bypass the whole thing because it's, it's, it's pretty rough. But there was a Nacken who was down by the river in this Swedish village and he's playing the fiddle and his music is just beautiful and people would come from miles around other villages everywhere just to sit and gather around and listen to him play and the horror of this story is that a pregnant woman came to watch him and, and listen to him play and the music was so compelling, so consuming, so absolutely unearthly and motivating that her unborn child couldn't wait to get out and hear the music. But it was too soon. And, you know, she she lost her child. And the, the Nacken felt absolutely horrible about it. He, he, he slunked away into the water never to be seen again. The villagers considered him the devil and all this. And it was this, just this utter, utter, utter tragedy where he, he fell into this depression. He didn't want to play music anymore. The, the, the woman lost her child. The villagers were upset. It was just an absolute tragedy. So that was a tough one for me. Um, but I want to put it out there just to be inclusive of, of this lore. Um, that it's not necessarily all just murder and mayhem or fiddles and fun, you know, but um, some of these, some of these old tales were very tragic and, and gritty and dark. So when the spirit of the creature spotlight, I want to look at the Nacken and think, 
there's a lot here. Why aren't we seeing more of this? There's so much that we could do. You know, I started thinking about, you know, if I was writing a story and I was going to insert a napkin into it, what would I do? Like one of the thoughts I had, and I love, I'm a sucker for uh, music when you talk about supernatural things and putting music into it. And you think about all the different musical themed mythology and folklore that we have out there. Imagine if we had to form some sort of musical group or a band <laughs> that were, were all supernatural beings. Like you could have like a siren, a muse, a knacken. Maybe you had someone had to track down um, Orpheus's lyre. Um, Orpheus was was ripped apart by the Maenads, if you follow Greek mythology. So maybe they're in possession of his lyre, and you need the the hero needs to s steal the the lyre back from the Maenads. That would be pretty pretty tough. Um, but maybe he's got help, or she's got help from the the siren, the muse, and the Nakan, right? And they're all teaming together, and they form this band to do whatever they raise money to save the the community center for the kids. I don't know. It's a Hallmark movie, right? I don't know. Could this guy be the villain in your story? You know, could this guy be the hero in your story, a side character? There's there's so much potential here when you talk about all the different things that a Nacken can do. The musical stuff, the shape-shifting stuff, the ability to sway minds further through it's the the hot bod or the music, right? <laughs> They've got a lot going for them. So they just seem like a very interesting creature to me. I wanted to talk a little bit about them and dive into them for this creature spotlight. I hope you thought they were cool too. There's a lot to them. I definitely encourage you to um, check them out, do your own research. I mean, there was a lot of lore that I found that I didn't include in this video because I I could have kept going on and on and on and I want to keep it somewhat brief. But um, yeah, the knacking, very cool. So that about wraps it up. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a like and as always, subscribe. I try to post most Thursdays and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also check out jmchaley.com. Lots of content out there, particularly for my Kindle Vela series, The Unlife of Lisa Cooper, and The Vampires of 1863. Check them out if you haven't checked them out already. You can also go onto that website, jmchaley.com, and leave me a message. Say hello. Let's keep in touch. Check out my merch store if you want to check out t-shirts, writerly t-shirts like this and more, mugs, whatever you need. Got you covered. And I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.